What was the most major cultural difference you noticed when you moved to another country? Story one. I know this is going to sound dumb, but when I visited USA, the first thing that I was in awe about was the trees because they look different than the ones from Australia. I just kept looking at all the different trees and flowers because they were not the same ones I would drive past for the majority of my life. Story two. When I relocated from Germany to the U.S., the sheer scale of everything made a lasting impression. Roads, cars, buildings, supermarkets, they're all massive compared to what I'm used to. It was a bit overwhelming initially. Plus, the American emphasis on individuality is starkly different from the community-oriented approach back home. Everyone's striving to stand out or make it big in some sense. I've also learned that in the U.S., distance is measured in time rather than kilometers, which was an amusing discovery. And let's talk about convenience. Stores are open 24 7 and you can get almost anything delivered to your doorstep. It sure is a land of plenty, with opportunities and conveniences at every turn, but also with an unspoken expectation of constant productivity. It makes you appreciate the diversity of lifestyles across the globe. Story 3. When I moved to Italy, one of the biggest cultural differences I noticed was how time is perceived. Being a bit late to a meeting or social event is totally normal and not seen as rude at all. Back home, punctuality was super strict, so adapting to a more relaxed attitude towards time took some getting used to. It's a nice change, though. It's all about enjoying the moment and not stressing over the clock. Story 4. Moving from Spain to the U.S., one of the biggest cultural differences I noticed was how people here are way more focused on work and less on socializing back in Spain. We have long lunches and siestas, and people spend more time with family and friends here. It feels like everyone is always in a rush and working long hours. Also, the food portions are so much bigger in the U.S., and tipping culture is a thing which took some getting used to. Story 5. My first day in my new home in South America, I was tooling around in my power chair, lemon incomplete quad, when its frame collapsed due to mishandling abuse by airline, and I was left helpless on the street in a big city. People here were typical city people, not particularly friendly or unfriendly, just living life. I saw a young man looking at me, and I asked in bad Spanish if he could help me. Within seconds, I was surrounded by folks in their 20s who were actively planning my rescue. They got me loaded into a cab and like 20 of these young people accompanied me back to my hotel where they made sure I got comfortably situated while they checked into getting me a rental chair and found a specialty welder who could fix my power chair's frame. Then they lectured my hotel manager on my care and feeding and said goodbye. I have never seen these folks again. All in all, it was an excellent terrible first day in Ecuador, really different from anything I experienced in 65 years in Estados Unidos. Story 6. Adapting to the work-life balance in the U.S. has been quite an eye-opener for me, too. In my home country, I was accustomed to a more communal life. Long chats with neighbors were the norm, not an exception. But here, it seems like having a packed schedule is a badge of honor. It's a shift from community-focused to achievement-focused living. Even hobbies are often discussed in terms of personal development rather than leisure. It's a different rhythm of life aimed more at what you accomplish than who you're with. And the coffee. Back home, coffee time is a ritual, a moment to relax, but here it's fuel for the hustle. It's all a fascinating reflection of the American spirit, which I'm learning to navigate, with a large cup of joe in hand, of course. Story 7. Jumping continents from Asia to America, the first cultural shakeup for me was the scale of consumerism. It's just astonishing. Where I'm from, shopping is a necessity, not a hobby. Here, it feels like there's a holiday every month pushing you to buy, buy, buy. And speaking of which, the marketing here is relentless. From billboards to online ads, it's a bombardment of sale signs. But that's not all. The convenience of services is something else. You think of something you need, and voila, it's two clicks away or at a store down the block. It's convenient yet daunting. How easy it is to get sucked into a spend more mentality. This adjustment to consumer culture ties back to the work ethic. You work hard, you earn, you spend. It's a cycle that's both impressive in its efficiency and energy, but also a bit intimidating when you're used to a more low-key approach to living. And yes, I've been caught off guard more than once by the insistence on an immediate reply to emails or messages, regardless of the day or hour. There's an undeniable urgency woven into everyday life here. Story 8. Growing up American. I was spoiled in being able to easily cool down when I wanted to cool down. Just turn on the AC or order a glass of ice water or the like. Moved to Europe and it was like, you want ice and water? Why? And no, no AC. It is very ugly and wastes energy. Open a window. Story 9. As someone who moved from the chill Mediterranean coast to the bustling streets of New York, I couldn't believe the nonstop nature of the city. Back home, afternoons are for siestas and evenings for family dinners that stretch on for hours. In New York, 
It's as if the city is fueled by espresso shots and ambition. The rhythm of life here is dictated by the ticking of the clock. Punctuality is key, and time is money personified. It's a contrast that, at times, makes me nostalgic for the leisurely pace of my homeland, but also fills me with awe at the sheer energy that pulses through the avenues. Here, brunch is a power meal, rather than a leisurely affair, and everyone seems to be walking with purpose. The constant buzz is infectious. It keeps you on your toes, striving for that New York minute where dreams are made. There's a beauty in the madness, the diversity, and the possibility that hangs in the air, somewhat like the steam rising from the manhole covers. It's not just a cultural shift. It's a whole different beat of life. Story 10. I studied in England for a semester. I consider it moved because I brought all my clothes, computer, bedding, etc., and had a small studio apartment off campus. The food was the major thing. Rather, the ingredients. I ate about the same amount of food and walked about the same amount I do in the U.S., but I still lost over 20 pounds in the six months I was there. U.S. diet is just so much filler junk that fattens us up. Story 11. I had to learn to say this to everyone in South Africa. Hi, how are you? Then they will reply, can't complain, and you. And then I will say, good, good. If you don't do greetings, you must have been raised by animals, as per my essay friends. It was funny I learned quickly. Story 12. When I moved from Europe to the States, the sheer variety of accents and dialects amazed me. I thought I had a good handle on English, but I found myself asking people to repeat themselves quite a bit. It was like learning new versions of the same language all over again. Story 13. I grew up in America, but moved away when I was a kid. Went back for somebody's wedding, and y'all have drive through everything and hardly any pavements. drive through liquor store, drive through pharmacy. I had to get a car to take me from one side of a busy road to another. In Europe, we have bridges over big roads. It was weird as hell. Story 14. Four times a day, shops close for prayer. Other factors include the way people drive and the dearth of leisure options like nightclubs, bars, and movie theaters. Am I missing any theaters? Oh, and if you're a single man, some retail centers won't let you in. Saudi Arabia is where I currently reside. Story 15. That everyone in Nagoya seems to care about the quality of the city. Lost my wallet, got it back with all the money inside. Seen people commonly walk many blocks with their trash in a plastic bag until they find a bin. Went to the Gaikokujin Center once or twice a week, and there were always so many volunteers to help us learn the language and culture. Among my adult students, many people volunteered at things that had nothing to do with their day jobs, like an engineer who coordinated hurricane evacuations. Other people would clean up after concerts they didn't even attend, and everyone feels safe to walk at night or let their kids commute alone on the subway during the day. America has great people too, but a big wedge of our pie chart is predatory. Story 16. Grew up in the U.S., moved away for seven years, and then came back. I'd have to say I was shocked by wastefulness that I never noticed enough growing up here. Boxes packed in boxes, individually wrapped everything, including produce that can be peeled, the amount of ketchup packets and napkins given at any fast food joint, plastic bags without additional charge. Story 17. A big cultural rift for me was the pick-up-your-trash culture in the U.S., or lack thereof. We'd go to the movies with friends, and after the movie, I would pick up my empty popcorn carton, Skittles wrapper, soda cup, and head for the bin that was on the way to the exit. My American friends were shocked. You know that people get paid to do that, right? I'd answer, yeah, but I mean, the bin is right there. It's on the way. And they would go on, yeah, but they get paid to do that. It's like I was robbing the movie theater employees of their money if I threw my own trash out. Not sure if it's only shocking from a Swiss person's point of view or if anyone from other countries agree. Edit. To be fair to them, we were 17 at the time. I guess we're all asshats in our own way at that age. <laughs> I doubt they'd still hold this point of view today. 15 years later. Sure as hell hope not. Story 18. A friend of mine moved here from Laos in 7th grade. I got to see the first time she ever saw snow, and she couldn't stop crying because it was so beautiful. As someone who has always lived somewhere that it snows, it was a real eye-opener on taking things for granted. She was also pretty floored by the foliage, too, but the snow, both falling, and that perfect, pristine surface you get after a good snowfall totally broke her. Story 19. Worst work-life balance in Canada compared to the UK. Where I live now, Alberta, you legally are not entitled to any annual leave in your first year of employment. It's determined at your employer's discretion. This is crazy to me. In the UK, from the very beginning of your job, if you work full-time, 37.5 hours, you're legally entitled to 28 days off per year. I find tipping weird, too, like I'm giving you extra money for doing your job. On a more positive note, the roads and houses are notably bigger in Canada compared to the UK, 
And it's a bit weird how in my area, most of the roads have numbers instead of names. So 1st Street, 56th Avenue, etc. Still can't wrap my head around that. Story 20. I moved from the U.S. to England 20 years ago. Everything was smaller and more cramped. People weren't friendly and I had to learn how to navigate everything on my own as my ex-husband was not helpful in the slightest. Watching the English and the culture map books really helped me out. I moved back to the U.S. this past December. Everything is more open. Cars are freaking huge and so are the roads. Driving is more aggressive. Food portions aren't as big as they used to be. I really struggled with the lack of light in the winter in the UK. My last house I moved into was open and light, which made everything so much better. I miss going to the pub, though. Story 21. Tipping culture. I didn't move but visited the Middle East from the United States and tried to tip a taxi driver who was genuinely offended and took it as me trying to give him charity. I had to explain that I wasn't trying to disrespect him and that I'm from a different culture. Story 22. Didn't move there but visited Tokyo for a while. I know it sounds stupid, but trash cans. Trash cans everywhere. If I had something to toss away, a trash can was never more than 20 feet away. And it was great. I hate having a wrapper in the USA. It might be a minute before I see a can. I might have to walk in a business to get rid of something or hold on to it for a block or two. Story 23. From England, how generally ordered Germany is. Specifically how, regardless of traffic, you don't cross the street unless the light's red or how everyone paid for train tickets despite the lack of guards or gates. As well as that my girlfriend is Spanish and I was so surprised by how she actually laughs with a J sound, as in jaja jaja as opposed to ha 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 ha. Story 24. I jaywalked constantly in Canada, not realizing it was a no-no. The word jaywalk wasn't even in my vocabulary. It wasn't until my boyfriend practically dragged me back to the footpath demanding to know what the hell I was thinking that I stopped. He also finds it very scary to drive in Ireland because people jaywalk all the time, especially in the city center. When you ask someone how they are in Canada, they will very earnestly respond exactly how they're feeling and ask you in return. It always feels like too much information. Half the time in Ireland, we don't even really answer the question at all. It's treated more like, hello. Story 25. Moved from Germany to the U.S. 16 months ago, and what very recently still got me is different approach to potential debt. In Germany, getting a loan is a very strict process, and credit cards are not common at all and have very strict limits. A few days ago, I bought new PC parts on Amazon and they offered a credit card with a voucher and 5% cash back for Amazon purchases, so I thought, might as well. The form asked me my income. I just typed it in without having to give them any kind of proof and within 20 seconds got a new credit card with a $27,000 spending limit, just like that without a second look. Feels dangerous and predatory and at the same time less patronized. Story 26. I lived in South Korea as a child and I remember some things were quite different but ultimately I was too young to remember the finer details. My long summer trip to Japan as an adult, though, was another story. The biggest difference I noticed was that politeness had a similar yet very different purpose than that of politeness in the USA. Each of us students were paired off with a Japanese-English student who was essentially hired to act as personal interpreters, guides, and cultural educators on top of gaining some college credits. They were off on Sundays, but the rest of the days, they spent almost all waking hours by our sides. My student partner was named Haruka, Haru. I told her that I felt right at home with people being polite and hospitable, as I was raised around that in the U.S., but she warned me to be wary of it. I specifically remember her putting it like this. People here are supposed to be nice and usually mean it, but sometimes it's not nice at all. That is true for the U.S. too, but when I thought about it, people in the U.S. could choose to just be douchebags sometimes. Whereas in Japan, it felt like everyone was expected to be nice, so the alternative wasn't really there. So, it was harder to read between the lines at times. One day, me and Haru walked past a few girls. One of them smiled at me and gave me a compliment. And when we fully passed by, the girl said something in Japanese to her friends and laughed. Haru immediately told me to wait there and left to confront her in Japanese before returning to me and apologizing for what happened. I asked what happened and she just said that girl was being cruel. Haruka declined to elaborate, but I remembered the warning she gave before. Having understood that whatever the girl did flew right over my head, I realized that I was out of my element, especially since my Japanese was kindergarten level at best. Story 27. I lived in France for nine months and the difference in the quality of the food was undeniable. It's so much less processed. I've always been on the chunky side, but without even trying, I lost 15 pounds in just a couple months. And I really mean it when I said I wasn't even trying. My host mom depended on me to eat all the leftovers, lol. Also, I usually drink 2% milk because it's easier on my stomach, but in France, I could drink any milk with no trouble. Story 28. I spent some time living in Finland, the longest time I'd spent outside the UK, actually. 
What struck me was how quiet it was. There's fewer people about, there's less bustle. People don't talk as much for as long and not as loudly. And that's before I went to a more rural area where I finally experienced true silence. In the UK, even in rural areas, you're never that far from habitation. So there's almost always the background noise from animals, people, or more usually cars. After coming back to the UK, it's hard not to realize how loud cars are and how the noise pollution always affects you. Edit. The weather also got to me. Not because it was extreme, but because it was so unchanging. Weather in the UK is always a gamble. Sitting at the middle of four air currents leads to it being very changeable. But in Finland, I could see the weather coming days in advance. And that was with the horizon hidden by hills and not the ocean I used to. Story 29. Maybe not the most major, but I one walked into a cafe in Germany and asked for a cup of coffee to go. Not only did they not oblige me, one, the person I spoke to just stared at me in confusion. And two, the only way to interact with the person preparing the coffee was through a server and circumventing the server was just not done. When you walk into that kind of cafe, you're buying both a coffee and the opportunity to sit there and drink it. These two products could not be separated. Story 30. I was truly shocked when I visited Japan. The number of rules and social norms they follow is impressive, and what's even more surprising is seeing how most people really strive to adhere to these rules meticulously. It's such a stark contrast to my home country, where norms are much more flexible and sometimes even ignored. 